So we're here at Expona at the Rhythm Room, and we have Jacob, who is the designer. Yeah, and the owner of the company. And the owner of the company, and he has got a really unusual, in my mind, pair of very high efficiency speakers with many other interesting features, but why don't you tell us a little bit about it, Jacob? Okay, um, we've been doing this for about 20, 22 years now. And during COVID, we redesigned the entire line. So we've come out with a brand new set of four different models. Okay, what you're hearing here is the uh, second model from the top. Okay. Okay, it's called the Marga. And uh, our line consists of uh, three floor standers and one monitor, stand mounted monitor. The stand mounted monitor is fully active, which means there are two amplifiers within each enclosure, one for the white bander and one for the bass. All right, the white bander runs on an amp that is a hybrid. We have a tube on the driver stage, which is quite unique in a built-in amp for a speaker. The rest of the line uh, are pretty similar in architecture, okay? They're all frost standards and they're all powered in the base. The only thing that varies is, of course, size of the enclosure, size of the drivers. So the one you're hearing has a six inch wide band driver and two, well, actually two seven inch base drivers out front, but it's isobaric, which means there are another two on the inside, which you don't see. Which are internal to the cabinet? Internal to the cabinet. Yeah, you don't see it. So it's sealed, of course, and four drivers per side. And just because this is unusual, when you say a wide bender, you are saying there's a six or whatever it is inch driver and not a crossover to a tweeter. No tweeters, it's just a single white bander with no crossover. So how do you get uh, a radiation pattern that's workable? Is there a wizard cone? Or... There is a wizard cone. Okay. That's what essentially gives us the highest. So the advantage, I mean, if you design it well, first of all, it's paper cone. With a whizzer, you, you know, and without a tweeter and crossovers, the highs tend to be very, very smooth. Okay, you don't get any grain or any peakiness in the highs. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of the Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack. First of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions. We'll pick the most interesting ones and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. And do. I mean, you don't have a cross, an electronic crossover, but there's a kind of a mechanical crossover. It's, Is that smoother it's, too? It sort of, uh, you know, it uh, it sort of uh, it it goes down to about 75 hertz, okay, and sort of fades out on its own. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, you you still get signal at about 50 hertz, but 75 to 80 hertz is where you get, you know, stuff that you can actually use. All right. So now that's horn loaded. The wideband driver has a horn behind it. It's a labyrinth that takes the rear wave of the driver out. And it comes out in a mouth opening at the bottom of the speaker. So essentially what that does is it gives us uh, a lot more usable uh, sound in the uh, 200 to 500 hertz area. Oh, I see. Okay. okay? And what it does also is it eliminates the boxiness that you get in a box speaker because it's open. It's open. Yeah. It's all right. So it's almost like an open baffle, except that we're using it to get us uh, the lower mid range. And I think for you, this is obvious, but what's the efficiency level? The efficiency is on this speaker is 98 dB. Okay. On, on our bigger speakers, it's 101. So you're showing it with a single-ended triode single -ended amplifier triode. that has about 8 watts. Between 8 say. and 10 watts, yeah. 8, 8 to 10 watts. Yeah. 
And is that like the recommended power level? Is you playing high levels? Oh yeah. And okay, it can it can go to any level with eight watts. Okay. Pretty much. Also because the bass is powered. Okay, the, the you know the amplifier is not driving the bass drivers. Okay. So it has a very relaxed time just driving that uh, white banter. Yeah. So the demonstration with SCT is not just for show. It's like that's all you need. That's all you need. I mean, you need only five or six watts. Okay. Although, of course, with this redesign, we've made sure that it does well even with solid state. I would not say that of all our previous generations. Okay, they were very partial to having tubes. Okay, but with this design, we have a much better lower mid range, and that allows us uh, to have solid state as well. Okay, yeah. Interestingly, we listened to a first watt. Uh, first watt? Okay. Yeah, that's 10, 10 per channel, right. pure class A, right. but solid state. That would do very well, yeah. And that yeah. seems like a, a good be a match good for fit. this kind yeah, of thing. That's right. Remember where these are priced in the United States? This is uh, 12,900. 12,900. Okay, great. And the model above it? The highest model is the one above that is uh, 19,900. Great. All right. That was very helpful. Jacob, thank you. Thank you very we much. We really appreciate it. Not at all.